Good YouTube Quinn Way coming to y'all with some instant analysis as the nighttime is almost here. 3 1 Grizzlies now against the 1 and 2 Pacers. The Grizzlies started off this game on fire 31 to 17 in the first quarter and 32 to 29 in favor of the Indiana Pacers and 31 to 29 Memphis Grizzlies in the third quarter and the Pacers made that late game run to try to find a way to steal the game but the Memphis Grizzlies held on although the Pacers scored 38 points in the fourth to their 29 the Memphis Grizzlies win 120 to 116 Brendan Clark for the Memphis Grizzlies two points plus two and plus minus three steals one assist Oh, one from three point line, one of six from the field. Didn't shoot the ball well at all. But, you know, it's just one game and he only played 15 minutes anyway. Aldama was two or four from the field, two or three from the three point line. They're going to need him to continue to shoot this well um, for this team to really function. Three rebounds, one assist, one steal, one turnover, plus 11, plus minus six points. Jake LaVaravia, two or six from the field, oh, three from the three point line, three or three from the free throw line. Eight rebounds, six assists, one steal. Three turnovers, three personal fouls, negative 10 and plus minus seven points. He was all over the place, you know, grabbing those rebounds and setting guys up and pushing the tempo of the ball, um, especially in semi-transition was something that he did well tonight. Desmond Bain looked it real good. Nine of 16 from the field, three of five from three, two of four from the free throw line was the only dent in his game. But he also had two rebounds, two assists, one personal foul, plus 11 to plus minus 23 points. He was tied for most points Today, with Zach Eady for the Memphis Grizzlies, Scottie Pimpin Jr., 3 of 10 from the field, 2 of 8 from the three-point line, 1 of 2 from the free throw line, 2 rebounds, 5 assists, 1 steal, 3 turnovers, 5 personal fouls, plus 11 and plus minus 9 points. Um, Bacot, 1 point, negative 7 and plus minus, all 1 from the field, 1 of 2 from the free throw line. Wells, 27 minutes, 4 of 7 from the field, 2 of 3 from the 3-point line, 2 of 2 from the free throw line, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, uh, 1 steal, 1 turnover, 3 personal foul, negative 16, and plus minus 12 points. He really did a good job of staying out the way, by, but still being able to knock down shots when they came his way, and that's what you need your role players to do. Um, Pereira, 2 of 3 from the field, 1 of 2 from the 3-point line, 1 of 2 from the free throw line. One rebound, one assist, one turnover, two personal foul, plus four and plus minus six points. Oni, one of three from the field, one of two from the three-point line, one of two from the free throw line. Three rebounds, two assists, two turnovers, three personal foul, plus one and plus minus four points. Huff, three of seven from the field, uh, one of three from the free three-point line, one of one from the free throw line. He also had one rebound, two assists, one turnover, two personal fouls, negative three plus minus eight points. Zach Eady was just absolutely dominant. He was catching some deep catches and just finishing with strength, going straight up. He was able to get some deep catches even for his post play. And he was even able to back down guys and still be able to finish with the hooks. That's what you want to see out of Zach Eady off that bench. He did play 19 minutes. He was 10 of 15 from the field. He missed his only three-pointer shot. And he also was three or four from the free throw line. He had nine rebounds in 19 minutes. He was the most biggest, most colossal-like uh, player on the court. And he used it even in finesse. And it was just good to see him settle in, get, play his game, take his time, and be absolutely patient to get the shots that he wanted. And it just looked it real natural. It looked it real good when he was out there on the court. He also had one assist, one steal. One turnover plus nine and plus minus 23 points. Con Char, two or four from the field, or oh, two from three. Two or two from the free throw line, four rebounds, eight assist. Well, eight rebounds, four of them was offensive, I should say. Two steals, one turnover, two personal fouls, six points. Leonard Kennard, uh, one of three from the field, one of three from the three point line. That was his only attempts. One rebound, assist was at one. One personal foul plus four and plus minus three points. And Kawa Mora, 25 minutes, three of seven from the field, three of seven from three. Those his only attempts. One or two from the free throw line. He had one rebound, seven assists, was really getting the ball up the court, really looking for guys early and often. And that was a big reason why they scored 120 points besides their starters having a great game in the dominant fashion of Zach Eady just interiorly destroying the team's um that he's played against but you know this bench actually looks good
But he did have one steal also, two turnovers, two personal fouls, negative seven plus minus 10 points. This looks like a formidable bench, especially when you get John ja Morant back healthy. He's going to be scoring, and Dansman Bain's going to be scoring. Jaron Jackson going to be spacing the floor and playing great defense. And then you get Marcus Smart back too. Some of these guys showing that they can be guys that can be counted on to be able to be great rebounders, great facilitators, and great scorers. And this is the type of bench that you kind of have to have if you're a team in a situation financially like the Memphis Grizzlies. You're going to need these guys to play above where you think that they should each and every night when they get an opportunity. And that's the mentality that they have had in preseason. And the Grizzlies does really look good. Um, they shot 43 of 92, 46% from the field, 16 of 43, 37% from three, 18 of 28, 64% from the free throw line, 47 rebounds, 32 assists, 11 steals, one block, 16 turnovers, 24 personal fouls for the Grizzlies. And then the Pacers, they had a lot of good signs. They didn't really have their best players. No Siakam and no Tyrese Hallenburton tonight. Want to get that out early because that did factor into how this game went. But Obi Toppin, eight points, negative 14 and plus minus two steals, one assist, one rebound, two of four from the free throw line, 0 of two from the three point line, three of five from the field. Walker, six of 11, was really physical, um, but he did also shoot the three, two of four from the three point line, one of three from the free throw line. Six rebounds, four assists, one block, three turnovers, two personal fouls, negative seven and plus minus 15 points. Miles Turner was able to hit some threes. Um, that kept him within the game, five of 10 from the field tonight. But he also had seven rebounds, two assists, one steal, one turnover, one personal foul, negative 14 plus minus 12 points. Andrew was able to hit some really good threes. Two or three from the three-point line, only missed one tonight. But he was also four of eight from the field. He had one rebound, four assists, one steal. One turnover, 10 points, negative 18 plus minus. He did play 20 minutes. And it was just good to see Benedict Matherin back again, like I've been saying for a while since preseason been going on. Four or 12 from the field, two or seven from three, two or three from the free throw line. One rebound, two assists, three turnovers, four personal fouls, negative 16 plus minus, 12 points. Sweeter, two or third, two or three, well, three or five from the field, two or four from the three point line, two or two from the free throw line, five rebounds, three assists. Uh, one personal foul, plus 12 and plus minus 10 points. Uh, Freeman, <laughs> 3 of 5 from the field, 0 of 1 from the three-point line. He did have seven rebounds in 24 minutes, two assists, one steal, three turnovers, six personal fouls, which is way too much. But he had plus 7 and plus minus 6 points. Jackson, 2 of 4 from the field, um, two rebounds, two blocks, plus 3 and plus minus 4 points. James the Giant Wiseman was 5 of 5 in 10 minutes. He ended up with 10 points, three rebounds, two assists, one turnover, negative three and plus minus. They're using James Wiseman the right way. And I think he has matured a little bit more and he knows what he really wants to do. But he was all four from the free throw line too. Brown, 101 from the field, one rebound, one turnover, plus three and plus minus two points. Um, Shepard, four of eight from the field, two of five from three, two of two from the free throw line. Two rebounds, five assists, three personal fouls, plus 13 and plus minus 12 points. Jackson, two or two from the field, six or seven from the free throw line, three assists, one steal, one turnover, one personal foul, plus 10, plus five and plus minus 10 points. And Newton, one of three from the field, one of two from the three point line, two of four from the free throw line, three rebounds, five assists, two steals, four turnovers, two personal fouls, plus nine and plus minus five points. And they did shoot real well, 43 of 79, that's 54 percent. 13 to 33, that's 39 percent, but they shot worse than at the free throw line. 17 of 29, 58.6 percent, and that was a factor down the stretch. 40 rebounds total for them as a team. 33 assists, eight steals, three blocks, 18 turnovers, 20 personal fouls, and they just come up just a little short because they had some inconsistencies defensively and offensively, which happens when the bench players come in and they play a lot of minutes, which they're not used to doing. Chemistry problems can happen, especially because the lineups change because of that same reason. And you're not used to playing with certain guys. You're playing with other guys. And it takes some time to click and get in the flow of things. And I think that that really hurt both teams. But somebody had to win. And the Grizzlies just came out 
really, really good, and they were just able to consistently play their style and their game for the most part, and they starters really did play well, and they did knock down more free throws, even though they didn't shoot particularly well from the free throw line either. But, you know, they did enough to get the job done, and when they built that lead, they had to come all the way back and all the way back, and Memphis didn't really have to do too much but hold on to the league and coast, which they ended up doing. They didn't look amazing. They didn't look crazy. They didn't look great, you know, in some aspects, but they did look like a team with a lot of depth and a lot of guys that can contribute, and that's basically what you're looking for in preseason and what you're trying to see. So I say the Grizzlies got what they wanted and the Pacers showing you that some guys still, you know, are if, ends or buts, you know, it's still some question marks for the Pacers bench and from the guys they're going to give minutes to outside of their starters. But at least they know that they have at least eight guys they can rely on and it might be 10 by the end of preseason. We just have to see and they can always fix that in the trade deadline or the buyout while the season is going on to be the best version of themselves going into the playoffs like every team wants to be. And that's the GM job to see, evaluate, fix what they have to fix, change what they have to change, and get it done while the team is still growing. But when it comes to everything else, this was just a good, fun game. Not a lot of star power, but great basketball at the end of the day. Comment, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell for more analysis. And if you're new to the channel, I make videos just like this, but breakdowns, tributes, and, and other content, other debates, other conversations about NBA basketball. So if you love NBA basketball and you can't get enough, this is the channel for you as I already have 2,000 plus videos. So check some other ones out. But also, if you've been on the channel, this is just a reminder, you may have missed a video that you didn't see. And you might want it to watch or you might want it to see it. So go back and check those out throughout the day, throughout the month, throughout the years. I upload a lot. So just make sure you check in as much as you can for the content that you want to see. Because most people love the content that I make. See you guys later.